And this is probably one of the most popular questions that I'm asked, you know, month in and month out, is if you don't know where you are, how do you determine what your location is? Come along with me and we're gonna figure this out because I, I, I honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea where we're at right now. Every year, thousands of search and rescue operations are conducted to return the injured, wounded, or lost. I'm Bill Stoker, and I'm on a mission to teach wilderness navigation and survival techniques so that you don't become a statistic. The time is now to master your craft. Hey, welcome back to the channel, friends. As always, it's good to see you. So it's a true statement, man. I really have no idea exactly where I'm at. And this is probably one of the most popular questions that I'm asked, you know, month in and month out, is if you don't know where you are, how do you determine what your location is? So hey, if you want to match your craft, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you can stay up to date on some future content. So you got a couple takeaways you can be able to get from this particular uh, video. The first one is that to be able to understand how to get a general understanding of where you are. And the second one is how to further define exactly where you're at so that you can pick up a route and get to where you're trying to go. Right. As we get going here, you know, I can tell you, um, you know, I, I know, I know that I'm in the state of Washington, right? So, so being lost, I, I guess you could say, is kind of a relative term. Right? I'm in the state of Washington. I'm on the west side of the pass, right? I'm east of I-5. I'm somewhere south of Tacoma, a little further east from Joint Base Lewis McCord, somewhere in this area. So it kind of narrows a few things down. I, I kind of, it's like being, I know what part of town I'm on, right? You're driving through town and man, you know you're on this side of town or that side of town. And, uh, you know, it's a matter of stopping and reorienting yourself. And that's probably step number one is what, what's the first thing you got to do? Right, and so you need to stop, man. And that's what we just did. I stopped, got the camera on a tripod, we're stationary. And you need, you need to think about where you're at in time and space. If you need to, you know, throw a pack down, uh, make up a, a, sh a short meal, have something to drink. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about here in just a minute. I'm going to walk you through everything that I know about what has led me to right now from where the car is. And then we're going to decide on what we're going to do, how we're going to get there. And you're going to come along with me and we're going to figure this out because I, I, I honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea where we're at right now. But I know that I was driving on, on, on Eastgate Road and I passed uh, the highway and I pulled off on the side of the road, on the north side of the road, and I kind of walked in and to the southeast. You know, I walked and I hit this uh, stream and I had to go and I had to find the bridge to get me over uh, this little creek and uh, kept moving. And I think I was moving in a pretty much of a south southeasterly direction but I, I i i could be anywhere in this huge section of property land and i you know, I, I know that i could just go west and i could find something you know that highway again but i kind of i want to know where i'm at right now and so without using my compass to, to get to a spot uh where we can figure something out i'm going to use the the terrain and what i see around us and what we're going to come across uh, and that's going to be kind of step one is is we have to i kind of know in my memory what has led us to here step two is getting into a place where we can figure out where we're at and then step three is we're going to book it back to the car and uh take it back to the house and, and have a cold one right, so it looks like i happen to stop just short of a some kind of a, a trail or a off beaten path trail here you can kind of see it cutting down here in uh in here behind me and then it kind of darts out to the back that way i don't know exactly what direction it's going uh sun's kind of high behind me i have no idea what time it is right now and you know if i st stood here and waited you know i can make a little shadow stick and figure out direction but i don't want to i don't want to wait i want to keep moving i want to keep moving uh so you know trails um kind of an interesting uh, thing here uh, because a, just like when we're moving through a city uh, uh, off street road you know when it intersects with a larger road you know it, it, we know that it's a larger road and all roads lead to another road and so I know that if I follow this trail one direction or another that eventually I'm going to run into something bigger than this and I know that this path has been used on uh, at some point in time in the past after uh, the last rain, uh, because there are some uh, 
some tracks from people right coming out here riding their horses and but it's not overly used because you know it's not it's not all ground in uh, so it tells me a little bit but it doesn't tell me enough to know where I'm at. And to be honest with you, as you can see on the map, man, there, there's not a road out here on the map that I'm using, uh, which I just printed off from USGS. You know, I could have used one of my topo maps uh, from work, but that, that would have been that would have been cheating. Um, so I think you know, looking around, um, I'm gonna set this down, and then I'm gonna zoom us in because I I, I got a little bit of daybreak over here that's a little bit lower than what's back over here behind me let's see if we can get this in. right so you can just kind of make it out in through here so that little speck right in there of white that that's that looks like it's a cloud and then uh, some of that blue up above it and I got some more blue up in here and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit I got more blue here and yet I can kind of see where it's a little bit lower uh, in sight now if I turn this around then I can see, you know, everything is way up higher, way up higher, and so I don't, I don't want to go that way. I want to, I want to go back this way because I, I think I might get to a spot that that might open up, and maybe we can figure out where we're at. So let, let's, uh, let's get to this. And I'm gonna follow this trail. Still making our way on this trail, starting to, to get a little bit more uh, open up here. We'll see what we can come across. It looks like I got another another road junction here. Um, mm. So I got a I got a trail that comes out this way, and then I got it. It almost looks like it more dead ends there, and then it kind of cuts back this way, and then I got a trail that shoots uh, this way and it's not too big um, but you know, this is a uh, you know it's all kind of part of the debate we'll take it down this way a little bit this looks like this is the direction of our horses um, you know when when you don't know where you're at and you're trying to formulate a plan you know you got to do a lot of things uh, you got to take into account how much daylight you have left uh, if you need to make a shelter if you just need to stop and stay put uh, exactly where you're at if you need to try to move you know, did somebody else know where you were heading off to before you left that's a big one and that's a big ouch for a lot of us um, got another trail coming in here looks like we're definitely starting to open up you got to make sure you know when you step out that somebody has a way of knowing where you're at they got a map and uh, they know how to get in touch with somebody who can find you if you end up getting lost like I just did <laughs> don't try this at home oh yeah definitely starting to open up Horseshoes almost like breadcrumbs, and it looks like they're all gone. This, this ground looks a little bit drier. I still see some evidence inside. Oh yeah, baby! Right. So I mean, th this is this is great. This is fantastic news. This is one of the things I needed so I could identify where I'm at in time and space. And so I'm gonna take my pack off. I'm gonna pull out my map, and I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out where I'm at because I know I know that Mount Rainier is to my east. Ish. I, know, I know that that is generally east. I know that's that's true east, right? Um, and so that means uh, that this way is north. That means that that is south and facing you or west, and you're looking east towards me. And we'll try to see if we can't figure out where I'm at. So I, I see this tree line. Unfortunately, this road, this main road, is not here uh, on my map. And as I look out east you know one of the first things you want to do is always orient yourself so that what you're looking at on paper when you look up is that direction so right now uh, the top of my map is north and I'm looking north if I wanted to look 
west and stay oriented, I would rotate my map so that west in front of me is west in front of me. It's just like having a navigation device in your car. And you can imagine if you plugged in a direction, hey, take me from the house uh, to the Mexican restaurant so I can go get my favorite tacos. If it didn't orient your, itself and it said turn left or turn right, you'd have no idea which way to go anywhere because you, you know, which way is up or down. So you always wanna make sure that you orient your map so that where you're looking at, when you look up, that's what you're gonna see. So now I'm looking north, I look down, and I can see this huge prairie out to my east. Uh, Mount Rainier is so far away, it's not gonna be on this map. And I'm gonna see if there's anything I can see off to the east. And of course, I think I see something. I think I see something on my map and out in front of me that may help. And it is this road, I, I can't see the name of the road on my map because my, uh, my map print off sucks. Um, but let me zoom in and see if we can't catch some of these cars. You see that, see that vehicle moving right there? I got one moving south and then one moving north. Man, that's great news. That's great news. Man, look at that mountain. That's beautiful. Right, so now that I've identified something out in the world around me, I can see on my map, I'm a little bit, I'm not there yet. I don't know exactly where I'm at, other than I know that I'm somewhere between uh, this road right here and this tree line. That's all I know. I, I, I'm somewhere on this tree line in between here, but I want to know a little bit more specifically about where I'm at so I can, I'll know where I'm at because that's step one to land navigation. Know where you are so you can plan a route and stay on the route and then recognize the objective. So as I'm looking around again, uh, I can kind of see uh, my tree line booking around over here to the right. That, that looks right as it is on my map. I have that road. I have this tree line here. And I think if I'm looking down uh, at this map correctly, I think I can see something out here. And we'll take it down to the map and I'll show you what I think I'm seeing uh, off in this direction that may help us and give us a clue to tell us where we are at And so again, I know that I'm somewhere, you know in this area on this tree line I did see you know, we saw it kind of the bending out here towards the south side and we kind of see it It's stretching out along here uh, going north of us and I can see um, you know this patch right in here and it looks a little marshy that's probably the creek either this one or this one up here is a creek I don't remember walking across one bridge so I don't know for sure maybe it was uh, washed out or, or something uh, it is a this is not the best map uh, but it does look like it, it could be a little swampy in here because uh, I do have the creek running through and uh, s some marsh just like over here I can see all this marshy area and you know the interesting thing about using the terrain around us as so you can kind of see those hardwood trees right and th that strand of trees is going to be close to water all those hardwood trees are going to be close to water so so down in, in that marsh is where I suspect these trees to be so, right, so we're gonna we're gonna take it down this way a little bit and uh, stay on, on the tree line and see if we can't find a spot to determine exactly where we're at All right, here we go. You want to be able to move out with, with some kind of confidence, you know, uh, as you're moving around. And, you know, you don't want to have to be looking down at your map all the time. You, you want to have you know, some kind of good idea for where you're at. You see this little catchment of water off to my left, man. I, if I knew nothing else, I would know that that water's on the north side of those trees. This is fantastic. This is this is exactly what we needed. Let me get this thing uh, down on a tripod. We'll turn it around. 
All right, so directly in front of me, we, we see we have both of these trees here, right? And then we have this little patch of hardwood that ends right, right here. There's a clear distinction between everything we see right here in front of us and everything else that's behind it and off to the left, which is to the west. And then we'll swing over this direction towards the east. And then again, we can see where this tree line ends directly in front of us. So now I kind of have a terrain feature that's kind of long and oblong. It's out in the middle of the open. And let's look at the map and see if we can see anything that closely resembles this. All right, so I'm thinking as I'm looking out that that patch out in front of me may be this little speck right in here because it's a smaller spread. It is a little marshy. And so I'm gonna expect some hardwood trees to be in this area. And that's exactly what we see. See. So now let's go ahead and shoot some azimuths and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this to figure out exactly where we're at. And so I'm going to go ahead and take my pack off and I'm going to take my map. And my, I got a compass and a pen and ink stick and I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to shoot an azimuth for myself over to the edge of this tree line off to my, uh, well I mean that's the eastern side. Now I'm going to use a compass to cheek method because I want a precise azimuth. Or bearing. It's about 48 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down, and I'm gonna do the same thing off to this other side. So again, I'm gonna use the compass to cheek method. I'm gonna look off to the edge of that tree line. I'm gonna look down, and it is 345. And again, I'm gonna write that down. Now we're going to take it to the map. All right, so our first bearing was 48 degrees, and that was to this spot right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor. I'm going to ensure that north is on the top and east is over to the right, and I'm going to put it off here right on the edge of that tree line. And at 48 degrees, it's right there. Now I can draw a line that's going to intersect that 48 and that section right there. And I need to keep drawing this out this way. And now my next measurement was 345 degrees. So again, I'm going to take my protractor, ensuring that north is on the top and east is on the right. And I'm going to put the center of my protractor right on the edge of that little tree line. Right there. And I'm going to measure 345 degrees. Take my protractor, line it up from... 345 to the edge of that tree line, draw a line, and bam, now I know exactly where I'm at. So I know I'm exactly right here where X, man. X marks the spot. Right, so there it is, man. That's how you do resection. I hope when you have to do this, you're going to have some more major terrain features around it. It could be man-made features, right? Like a big water tower or a large hospital or something that's out there or a big, large peak. Like if Mount Rainier was on my map, I could shoot an azimuth to Rainier and then work my way back. So the more of these you can do, the better. Right? The minimum that you need is two so that you can get an X, but if you get a third it's going to dissect in there and it's really going to help hone you down and make sure that everything is right because you don't want to make a mistake now that we know where we're at i can figure out the quickest and easiest way to get back up to east range road book it back to the west to the car and we can get out of here Get out of here.